This is Sebastian Tomek with an Ancient DNA paper review. In this review we will discuss the oldest till date sequenced anatomically modern human, covering samples older than the last glacier maximum about 26,000 years ago. First, the Ust Ishim individual from Western Siberia, from the article Genome Sequence of a 45,000 year old modern human from Western Siberia. Second, the Tian Yuan man from China, from the article 40,000 year old individual from Asia provides insight into early population structure in Eurasia. Third, the Oase individual that is up to 40,000 years old, from the article An early modern human from Romania with recent Neanderthal ancestor. Fourth, the Koskenki 14 man from southern Russia, close to Ukraine. 36,000 years old from the paper Genomic Structure in Europeans dating back at least 36,200 years. And finally, fifth, the Goyet Q116 man from about 35,000 years ago from the paper The Genetic History of Ice Age Europe. There are two additional very old samples, the Jana individual from 30,000 years ago in the paper, the population history of northeastern Siberia since the Pleistocene, and the Sanghir individual from 33,000 years ago in the paper, ancient genomes show social and reproductive behavior of early upper Paleolithic foragers. Both these papers are so interesting that I will cover them in separate reviews. Modern humans are believed to have migrated out of Africa maybe 100 to 80,000 years ago. This is during the last ice age. At that time there are archaic humans population in large parts of Eurasia, the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. I will make separate videos about those later. We don't have ancient human DNA as old as 100,000 years yet. See my video Ancient DNA on why this is the case. The oldest DNA we have is the 45,000 years old Ust Ishim individual. When compared with western hunter gatherers and the 24,000 year old genome from Siberia, the Maltaboy, the paper found that the population to which the Ustishim individual belonged diverged from the ancestor of present-day West Eurasian and East Eurasian populations before or simultaneously with their divergence from each other. So at this time there was yet no separation between East and West Asians. But they also find that Ustishim genome shares more derived alleles with present-day people from East Asia than with present-day Europeans. What this suggests is that present-day Europeans derive some of their ancestry from a population that did not participate in the initial dispersal of modern humans into Europe and Asia. The time of admixture between modern humans and Neanderthals has previously been estimated to about 37 to 86,000 years ago based on the size of the DNA se segments contributed by Neanderthals to present-day non-Africans. Thus, the Ustishim individual could predate the Neanderthal admixture. From the extent of sharing of derived alleles between Neanderthal and the Ustishim genome, they estimate that the proportion of Neanderthal admixture in the Ustishim individual to be similar to present-day East Asians and present-day Europeans. Thus, the admixture of Neanderthals had already occurred by 45,000 years ago. In contrast, they failed to detect any contribution from Denisovans, although such a contribution exists not only in present-day people from Oceania, but also to a lesser extent in mainland East Asia. A common model for modern human colonization of Asia assumes that an early coastal migration gave rise to the present-day people of Oceania while at a later more northern migration gave rise to Europeans and mainland Asians. The fact 
that the 45,000 year old individual from Siberia is not more closely related to the Onge from the Andaman Island than he is to present day East Asians shows that at least one other group to which the ancestor of the Ust Ishim individual belonged colonized Asia before 45,000 years ago. Second, we have the Tian Yuan man from China, 40,000 years old. This is the first individual with distinctively more closely related to East Asians than to West Eurasians. This paper concludes that several distinct populations existed in Eurasia. Populations represented by Koskenki 14, number 4 in our list, contributing to present-day Europeans, and the Tian Yuan man contributing to present-day East Asians. Thirdly, we have the Ways 1 individual, also up to 40,000 years old, from present-day Romania. This individual has about six times as much Neanderthal DNA than current Europeans, and is believed to have had a Neanderthal ancestor as recently as four to six generations back. The absence of a clear relationship of the Ways 1 individual to later modern humans in Europe suggests that he may have been a member of an initial early population of, of humans that interbred with Neanderthals but did not contribute much to later European populations. Fourth, we have the 36,000 years old Koskenki 14 individual from southwestern Russia that they found shares a close ancestry with the Malt Aboy from central Siberia. European Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, some contemporary Western Siberians, and many Europeans, but not Eastern Asians. Additionally, the Koskenki-14 genome shows evidence of shared ancestry with a population basal to all West Eurasians that also relates to later European Neolithic farmers. Their finding reveals that the timing of divergence of West Eurasians and East Eurasians to be more than 36,000 years ago, and that European genomic structure today dates back to the Upper Paleolithic and derives from a metapopulation that is at times stretched from Europe to Central Asia. Their results show no close relationship between Koskenki 14 and the Australomelanesians and support earlier studies that suggest Australomelanesians derive part of their ancestry from an early population divergence that predates the separation of Europeans and East Asians. Fifth and finally we have the Goyet Q116 individual from 35,000 years ago from the Goyet in present-day Belgium, Europe. This individual is similar to the Koskenki 14 in that it shares more alleles with present-day Europeans than with East Asians. For more information from the paper The Genetic History of Ice Age Europe, see my video Ice Age Europe. I will leave you with a note that in the late Pleistocene, early up part of Upper Paleolithic, the peoples of Eurasia was diverse and very different from today. Some of them would leave little or no descendants and some would spread to be the ancestor of modern day populations. Thank you for listening, till next time I wish you all the best.